Hey guys, welcome back, and welcome to part two of this Python text RPG tutorial. This is going to be the first part of the actual coding. As you can see on the screen here, probably, we're starting from a blank slate and making a full-featured command line Python text RPG. I'm making this video because some of my friends wanted to learn Python. They love video games, they love classic video games, and I wanted to basically dive headfirst into Python in a really fun way. I did this stuff a long time ago. I think it was probably the best way I learned Python and really got into loving code, seeing how I could make something from scratch myself. So I think this is a really fun way for beginners to start and it's not that hard. This series of videos will probably take about 40 minutes to an hour on projecting. So let's get started. First thing to do with navigating Python I want to teach you guys are comments. Uh, comments you can do with a hashtag is a main way or you can do uh, triple quotes like this. So let's put a hashtag at the start and write our first line of code, which is just going to be a comment here. Python text RPG. You can put your name here if you want, if you're proud of it. So there's a few things that you're going to have to just bear with me and assume that we need for this project. And eventually you'll learn what each of these things does on their own and we'll break it down throughout the video. But we're going to start with import statements. So import statements basically let us grab commands that we otherwise would maybe have to hard code or wouldn't be possible for us to code ourselves. And it just lets us speed up the process. So we're going to import a command. Command will help us use a command line. Import text wrap. This will let us wrap text around in the console so that doesn't overflow or just look ugly. Import sys for system functions. Import os for operating system functions. Import time for time-related functions, counter, sleep, other things we'll be using later on, and import random, which is, if any of you have played D&D, rolling the dice, basically. And we'll set a thing that we'll name now uh, screen width. We'll set it to 100. So for those of you who might have seen JavaScript, Java classes like in Minecraft, uh, there's a thing called camel case. So you would name your stuff like a uh, screen width like that with a second word being capitalized and every word on after that. In Python, you use underlines and all lowercase. So that's the format I'll be following for this. And I think it's clean and easy to read. So let's set up our player. I don't know what you guys will want your player to be like, uh, all the things that you want to capture about your character, different features about them. But I'm going to teach you how to put them all in a thing called a class, which is a basically a way to store the state of your character and initialize them at the start of the game so that it's always safe throughout and you can access those values or numbers or things like uh, health and status uh, at any point in the game. So I'm making these nice comments here so that we can basically see uh, where stuff goes once our file starts becoming long and kind of convoluted. So this will be our player and then we need to write a thing that initializes it called def underscore two underscores in it underscore underscore self. And this basically means that of the class player, we're defining a function that initializes it as itself. And we're going to write self.name equals a placeholder right now. And note that I'm using single quotes, not double quotes. Sometimes this matters, sometimes it doesn't. Just for the sake of this video, let's abstract it away and just use that. Um, we can use self.hp equals, uh, let's do a number. So if you put something in quotes, that means it's a string, which means it's text, and the Python expects you to be modifying text. Well, if you put it as a number, it automatically initializes to an integer or a double if you put 0.0. .0 a double meaning a decimal number. So let's just leave it as self.hp equals zero for now. Let's also add a uh, magic points equals zero. Let's see what else do we want. Um, hmm, what other things would be great for a fantasy RPG? Uh, status effects. There we go. And that's an empty array basically. And what else? That should be good for now. So that's basically just a very brief thing of how a class can initialize and store values that we'll be using later for our player class. And then now we want to set this up and run the command so that this player exists. So this initialize means that we have to call the class player and actually create him. Right now this is just a placeholder. So 
we're gonna set um, my player equals to player and these two brackets at the end or the single bracket means that we're calling the function player inside class player so the initializer and now my player is set up and ready to go now moving on to the title screen so the title screen is basically what we're going to start focusing on for the first part of this video and it's a thing that i think a lot of people actually get tripped up on uh, making a title screen that's navigatable through command prompt and interactive so let's start with that So we're going to make a function called title screen selections. This will allow the player to select the menu options. It's going to be case insensitive. So we're going to change everything that a person might type into lowercase to navigate the menu. And they're going to type to navigate this menu. So let's make a thing called option and let's define it as an input. An input is something that a person will type into command prompt. The command prompt will prompt you to enter your text or whatever to continue it. So let's make our input a uh, arrow with a space following it for the sake of kind of classic old text games. So this is where we're going to get into if and else statements. Uh, basically lets you navigate your Python game through logic. So if this option dot lower case equals, let's call it um, play, will be the option. Then let's start the game. And we'll make this function later. This will be a placeholder until it's written. Now we can use an else if. So elif means else if, and that basically lets us go through the other options. So we'll have it if play, if quit, if help. So if help, Then let's uh, go to help menu. Else, um, actually, elif. Quit. Then we will do system.exit. So, or sorry, sys.exit. So, sys.exit will let us basically close out a command prompt and the game will end. Now, after all of these three options have been exhausted, or if someone types something wrong, we want to be able to continue using the title screen until we actually want something to happen. We don't just want the command prompt to end, and then we're stuck there without anything to do. So we'll add a while loop. This while loop will run forever as long as someone types something wrong or doesn't type something that will be able to continue us through command prompt. So option dot lower, not in play, help or quit. So this is our first case of seeing a list being used. So what this loop basically does is while what the person types is not in any of these three options, play, help, or quit, it's going to cycle through prompting them to type something correctly. So not in in Python basically looks in this for loop, play, help, quit, and if it's not in it, then it keeps going. So we'll print to the console, uh, please enter a valid command. And now we want to prompt the person again with an input. And we'll basically copy this and paste this again for the sake of ease. This may not be the best style, but the goal is to give you guys a very basic, easy tutorial intro into everything possible that would help you make a game yourself. This isn't going to explain to you all the intricacies of Python and the best way to make amazing run times if you already know some CS. This is just to get a fun little game going. So now we can create the title screen function itself, and that will print out what the player sees. So, uh, Operating system dot system dot clear. So this line that I've just typed here, OS system clear, this types clear into command prompt automatically, 
and it will just make anything else going up in the command prompt go away so that we have a clean title screen to start with. So this is one of those lines that you'll just kind of have to assume how it works. I'm just adding some white space so we can bring this back up to the top. And let's see. Let's start printing our title screen. So to print stuff to console, we'll just use print and probably a lot of these. Um, let's make a nice little border. So let's say uh, let's just print a bunch of these like that. I like using hashtags. Feels kind of classic. And then we can put our text here, like "Welcome to the text." RPG. There we go, that looks nice. That worked out well. We'll add another print. And what's nice in Python, since everything is pretty much tab based and the print statements line up, is you can already kind of visualize what this is going to look like in the console when the person launches it and starts actually playing their game. So now let's start making the print options. Let's see, play. Let's stylize this a little bit. That looks centered, yep. Yeah. All right, well, I'll play, help, quit. And if you want, you can put something like copyright 2017, whoever you are. I don't really care about copyright for the simple game like that, but this is just an example. All right, and that's gonna print it in the console. That's actually good to go there then. That's what the person will see. And then to get out of this title screen text and to get back into the selection so that the player can actually navigate what you just printed, we will call title screen selections. And don't forget to add this bracket to the end, otherwise the function is not actually called to run. Now let's go through these options. We made start game, a help menu, and exit. Exit is from the system function that we imported above here, so we don't have to do anything about that. That will work. That's nice and easy for us. But start game and a help menu are things we made ourselves. So start game obviously will be the entire game, not appropriate for just this part of this video. So let's finish up the title screen with help menu. So let's make def help underline menu. Don't forget the colons after. If you get at any point when you're running this, if there's issues with colons, whatever else, if there's a syntax error, make sure your colons, your brackets, and your spaces are correct. That's probably the biggest thing that any newbie runs into with Python, and even veterans have this all the time. So this help menu is basically just going to be more print statements. You just want to make sure the player knows how to navigate, stuff like that. So, welcome to the text RPG. Use up, down, left, right to move. Type your commands to do them. Use look to inspect something. And good luck and have fun. And that's our help menu. It's just text, that's it. And then to give the player the option to get back out of it, we take title screen selections and call it again. If you don't call title screen selections, the player won't have the option to select options to actually start the game or quit the game. It'll just end there already. So don't forget that. And now with that done, the only thing left to do is start game, and we can actually start making our game. We'll write that function, set it up there, and I'll see you guys in the next part for actually making the gameplay of our Python text RPG. See you then.